Hello and welcome to another episode of Apple with the Doctor podcast. Today we'll be going into whether or not marijuana can cause withdrawal symptoms, how obesity can affect your kidneys, and a little bit more. So let's start with the first bit of news. Probably the reason why you clicked on this podcast. How pot can cause withdrawal symptoms. So this goes into how if you use something too often, your body begins to form an addictive um, tendency towards it. And so a study from Columbia University you know, one of those big-brained Ivy League schools. A professor from the School of Public Health stated that one in ten frequent cannabis users report symptoms like anxiety, hostility, insomnia, and depression after they come down from their high. It's important to note, though, some people who use marijuana also use it to treat their anxiety, their insomnia, uh, to increase their appetite. So there's many reasons why people use marijuana, and also for recreational use. And I guess this is the perfect point to insert or shoehorn a ad for my upcoming podcast, where I go into a little bit about marijuana, the effects of marijuana. And specifically focus it towards Canada, who recently legalized marijuana use. But back to this. Now, it's important to note that they used an epidemiological study, a uh, survey study. Now, an epidemiological study isn't something that's conclusive. It's not as concrete as an experimental study Um, but I question how would you actually conduct an experimental study on the effects of marijuana Um, you could only do a survey so in medicine if you really want to have concrete evidence you have to have an experimental study that goes along with it or you can have really high correlation or really evident studies uh, from an epidemiological standpoint. So one of these would be how uh, smoking cigarettes increases your chance of lung cancer. They didn't exactly do a uh, experimental study at first. They did epidemiological studies to in order to uh, figure out what's going on, whether or not there's a link to being um, investigated or to do a little bit more studies on and so this new study focused on survey responses of 1500 participants who reported that they use pot weed two to three times a week or more uh, in the previous year and this considered to be frequent marijuana users and so 12% of these heavy pot users reported symptoms that aligned with uh, cannabis withdrawal syndrome Uh, something that's uh, outlined in DSM-5 or uh, diagnostics um, something manual it's for psychiatric disorders uh, because there's a wide range of psychiatric disorders who have particular traits that go along with it and every year they're continuing in, um, to sift through these, to redefine these, so that it's easier for newcomers to come along and identify the disorders. Um, so that's where you have the, uh, the debated change in gender dysphoria from gender disorder, or gender identity disorder, sorry. 
um, you have the definition depression. They changed the definition of bereavement. Um, I can, I'll go into that a little bit later in a different podcast. Um, so this is one of those psychiatric, um, tools that people use, um, unless you're like a experienced psychiatrist, which I'm not, uh, then a lot of people use DSM-5 as a criteria. Um, and it's the only, um, it's the only, uh, tool that's actually quoted, um, for diagnosis other fields of medicine don't quite use that um it's more like in the report probability but it's how you define disease and so um for those who are wondering the results of the surveys um 12, like i said before 12 percent of heavy pot users reported symptoms that align with cannabis withdrawal syndrome and this included anxiety which it was in 76% of this 12% hostility, which was 72% and this 12%. By the way, I've never really seen someone who uh, was hostile after they were coming down from weed. I mean, I've had friends who were pot smokers. Maybe they were just different or they just didn't use it that often. They also had sleep difficulty, which is 68% and depressed mood, which is 59%. And so, um, because this is almost near one in 10, um, they're deciding to call this as a, uh, um, withdrawal and further, further, uh, provide evidence for cannabis withdrawal syndrome. And they were able to, um, differentiate between, um, the amount you smoke with, um, whether or not you're going to develop some of these symptoms. And they found that if you smoke five joints or less per day, so uh, similar to how cigarettes are joints, um, it, you're not likely to actually have these disorders. Um, if you had six or more, you were more likely associated with the cannabis withdrawal syndrome. Um, I've only seen this once or twice um, th during my relatively young career. Um, and all we did was stick them in a hot shower, which, uh, alleviated their symptoms, supposedly. And so this is something to, uh, note as we are currently discovering more and more with, uh, the further legalization of marijuana in the United States. Um, it's something to consider, uh, Canada it will probably be our testing ground, I should say. Uh, since they decriminalized it across the entire nation, uh, we can look to them and see whether or not um, marijuana has uh, consequences or unintended consequences. Uh, we do have uh, Colorado and here in the states to look towards, uh, see what hindrances that we would need to uh, fight against or prevent against. One of those are. Um, the anecdotal evidence of children sneaking in gummies while, <laughs> while they're in school um, and getting high while their their teachers are talking. Um, while it may seem harmless, but it's, it's most likely detrimental to that child's progression in their school. And I'm for one is uh, really supportive of education. So uh, that's something to look out for. And it'll be interesting to see how Canada handles its problems with marijuana. But like I said before, I will go into how uh, marijuana can affect or what to look out for in Canada in a different podcast. And for the next piece of news, uh, how does obesity affect kidney transplant success? Um, this is from uh, WebMD that I'm grabbing this from. Um, so they had this clickbait article similar to the clickbait that I have posted as the title for this podcast. But um, obese, obesity is a problem that affects many Americans. Um, it once affected myself as well. Um, now, the success when you transplant a kidney um, is reliant upon many different factors, whether or not they pro appropriately matched up your HLA uh, markers or 
whether or not they actually have a decent match for you, uh, which is the HLA, uh, whether or not you're on the correct medications for with the for a transplant, um, the immune suppressors that are used for um, your body's acceptance. Uh, but the problem is, is that it's not exactly after the transplant is done. That's the issue. It's uh, they're complaining about when the surgery is taking place. There are certain issues that happen. It's important to note that the surgeons need access to your kidneys in order to uh, transplant a new kidney, and that should be evident. Hence, a transplant. There is no laparoscopic procedure that I know of. Um, it is one slice in the back. And they take out the old kidney and they put in the new kidney. It's simple as that. Make sure everything's connected properly. All the tubes, all the plumbing is adequate. And whether or not there's blood flow. Uh, and that's about it. And they sew you back up. One of the challenges is that the tools have a certain thickness. Um, and if you're morbidly obese and you have a lot of fat in the area. It makes it difficult to actually access the site. And so those are uh, one of the problems that uh, a surgeon will occur when they're trying to do a transplant. However, it should be mentioned that a kidney transplant, uh, the person's quality of life is significantly better and it increases the longevity of that person if they have a transplant, but it is still compared to uh, dialysis. Dialysis has its own issues there is a um, there's problems with amyloidosis. Uh, a lot of times, people come in with exacerbations if they miss their uh, dialysis appointments, like their Monday, Wednesday, Friday, or Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday appointments. When you're on dialysis, you have to go three days a week in order to draw off this fluid. And a lot of people also have trouble drawing off this fluid uh, when it comes over to the weekend because it's. The long haul, especially when they're a Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Uh, Friday through Monday, they're either drinking a lot, they're not paying attention to their liquid intake. And sometimes they'll come into the hospital and really uh, have come in with fluid overload. And they'll need uh, quote-unquote emergent dialysis. Uh, one time when I was in the hospital, I was on the nephrology service. And this guy who had a history of coming in every week for dialysis on Monday because all he would do is drink over the weekend. And he was one of these uh, Monday, Tuesday, or sorry, Tuesday, Thursday, Saturday patients. And so he, he said he all he drank was orange, orange soda, uh, no alcohol. And uh, he would come in every week and every week I would have to do a consult note on him. And it was fairly annoying. He was one of those patients who weren't compliant. But all these patients that I've seen, they are compliant with their dialysis and they know the importance of it. But it's, if the person can get a transplant, their quality of life goes much better. And so uh, these people did a retrospective um, study and they went back through their records and they found that people with um, normal BMI um, to... Uh, the borderline of what's considered overweight had no issues um, and had ideal kidney transplants. Uh, but however, they mentioned that there should be uh, individualized sessions in order for the person to uh, be evaluated. It's not simply off the person's BMI. Um, the surgeon will have to come in and inspect the area and to make sure that the uh, site is accessible um, but they found that the cutoff between um, 30 to 40 for a waiting list uh, might be beneficial or sorry um, is while common is arbitrary and unfounded uh, so if they find out that you're obese they might put you back on the um, waiting list but the surgeon from New York that's um, being consulted here suggests that it's um, should be evaluated on a case by case basis. So let's say if you have if you don't have a fat pack, you might be able to actually have this uh, procedure done.
but uh, I think I'll keep this uh, podcast short. Uh, I hope you enjoyed listening. Please do tune in again. Um, Again, this was the Apple with the Doctor podcast, uh, where I hope to inform you a little bit about what's happening in the medical field and hopefully learn a little bit more so you have a better chance of uh, making better decisions in your healthcare.